Hello and welcome to Emirates News broadcasting from Dubai. I'm Ramia Faraj. The headlines tonight. The president orders the establishment of a fallen frontline heroes order for those who've lost their lives while tackling COVID-19. The president directs that the deaths of 1,607 Emirati citizens worth 869 million dirhams be waived. In the business tonight, the UAE is set to host an Israeli business tech and investor delegation in person at the 40th JITEX Technology Week, which begins this Sunday. And in the sport, the UAE national team looks for a new head coach yet again. After 154 days on the job, George Pinto leaves by mutual consent and the search for a new manager gets underway. The President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, has ordered the award of the Fallen Frontline Heroes Order to those who have lost their lives on the front lines while tackling COVID-19. The award is based on a proposal by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces and Head of the Frontline Heroes Office. The order recognizes the dedication and courage of frontline heroes and the great sacrifices they made for the UAE and its society while performing performing their duty. It is an expression of gratitude to them and to their families. Under the directives of the President and with the support of the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, the non-performing debt relief fund today announced that 12 banks have waived the debts of 1,607 Emirati citizens with a total value of 870 million dirhams. The gesture is part of the UAE leadership's keenness to ensure a decent life for all Emiratis and the highest possible standards of social stability. The Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi today tweeted to mark the occasion of Commemoration Day. Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed wrote, On this day, we salute the fallen frontline heroes for their courage and dedication. They made the ultimate sacrifice on the front line of defense of this country. They will remain in our hearts and inspire future generations. May our martyrs rest in peace. Their sacrifice remains the beacon that lights our path in difficult times. Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed said, On Martyrs Day, I would like to join the nation in paying tribute to their heroism and saluting their devotion to protecting our country and our people. Chairwoman of the General Women's Union, President of the Supreme Council for Motherhood and Childhood, and Supreme Chairwoman of the Family Development Foundation, Her Highness Sheikh Fatima bint Mubarak, has sent a message of gratitude to the mothers and families of martyrs on the occasion of the annual Commemoration Day. In her message, the mother of the UAE expressed her pride in the Emirati heroes who sacrificed their lives to keep the country's flag flying high, saying the UAE will always remain high like the mountains due to the great mothers who gave birth to the heroes who lost their lives in the battlefields while defending the nation. Their names will always be remembered and engraved in the nation's history. O oh, mothers of martyrs, I salute you all with much appreciation, respect, and gratitude. One minute of silence was marked across the UAE this morning as the country remembered Emirati martyrs on Commemoration Day. The nation fell silent at 11.30 to recognize the sacrifices and dedication of UAE martyrs who gave their lives for the safety and prosperity of the nation. The Martyrs Families Affairs Office sent out an SMS to residents to be part of the nationwide event, which was held under the hashtag Proud of Your Sacrifices, with thousands of people taking to social media to thank the martyrs for their unwavering service. The UAE Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation has condemned the assassination of Iranian nuclear scientist Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, whose car was ambushed by gunmen near Tehran on Friday, saying it could further fuel conflict in the region. In a statement, the ministry said, given the current situation in the region, the UAE calls upon all parties to exercise maximum degrees of self-restraint to avoid dragging the region into new levels of instability and threat to peace. 
Now to the latest COVID-19 news on the UAE today announced 1,107 new cases of the virus. This brings the total number of infections recorded since the start of the pandemic to nearly 169,000. The Ministry of Health and Prevention also announced 714 new recoveries, bringing that total to nearly 155,000. Two new fatalities were also reported in the last 24-hour period, bringing the UAE's coronavirus death toll to 572. Dubai Media Office has issued an update urging UAE citizens and residents to abide by the pandemic precautionary measures during this week's National Day holidays. The precautions include always wearing a mask and practicing social distancing. Private gatherings are allowed, but they must be limited to no more than 20 people to help avoid the spread of COVID-19. And everyone should avoid crowded public places. All public and private sector employees have a long weekend starting tomorrow to mark the UAE's 49th National Day, which celebrates the foundation of the UAE on December 2, 1971. Sharjah police will increase patrols by shopping malls and other public venues during the National Day holiday to ensure people are following social distancing protocols. More than 180 patrols were launched on Sunday to review public spaces ahead of the holiday period. Police plan to increase patrols on the first two days of the celebration with extra staff located at areas of high traffic. Police will target public gatherings in particular to prevent the spread of covid Shopping malls will also see an increase in police patrols to ensure that retailers and visitors are following strict safety rules at all times. Police are calling on the public to report any illegal acts by calling 999 for emergencies and 901 for non-emergency cases. The Roads and Transport Authority has announced an update to the timings of its services during the 49th National Day and the Commemoration Day holiday. All paid parking zones except for multi-level terminals will be free across Dubai from tomorrow up until and including Thursday. RTA service provider centers will be closed from tomorrow until Sunday. However, the Smart Customer Happiness Centers will continue to operate 24-7 as usual. Metro services will start at 5 a.m. on the red line and half an hour later on the green line, but will run until 1 a.m. Users of Dubai's bus services and marine services have been advised to check the altered schedules for the holiday. The RTA also requested the public to follow all coronavirus precautions. The UAE and Israeli consulates in Brazil have distributed food parcels in Sao Paulo to those affected by the pandemic. The initiative aims to ease the burden on vulnerable and low-income families facing dire conditions following the loss of their jobs as a result of the crisis. Local residents express their appreciation for the initiative as well as for the social development and aid work of the UAE. The UN Refugee Agency has commended the UAE for supporting humanitarian efforts to airlift emergency aid to Ethiopian refugees in Sudan. Last Friday, a plane carrying 32 tons of emergency aid from the UNHCR's global stockpile at Dubai's International Humanitarian City departed the Emirates and landed in Khartoum. It included 5,000 blankets and 4,500 solar lamps along with mosquito nets plastic sheets and plastic rolls. Another airlift was scheduled to leave the Emirate today with 100 tons of additional relief items, including 1,275 family tents and 10 prefabricated warehouses. This aid will meet the immediate shelter needs of more than 16,000 people. A spokesperson for the UNHCR said the transport costs of both flights were generously covered by the UAE government and a further two airlifts are planned. Last week, the UAE announced that it was allocating 18.4 million dirhams in support of the recently arrived Ethiopian refugees in Sudan. Back in the UAE, the Authority of Social Contribution, MAN, is trying to raise 15 million dirhams for two new campaigns. The first aims to support the National Program for Organs and Tissues Donations by funding transplant operations and providing medicine for beneficiaries during their recovery. The second is the Orphans Support Program, which aims to raise money to cover the education, marriage and housing expenses for orphans in the capital. The two campaigns are in line with Abu Dhabi's social priorities, 
issues related to family, community and social cohesion, as well as education and the development of skills. Man is asking the public to contribute today by visiting fundraise.man.gov.ae. The Dubai Health Authority has launched the first phase of the Unified Electronic Medical Record System. The initiative aims to provide every patient in Dubai with an electronic medical file that can be accessed across all public and private health facilities in the Emirate. It will provide physicians with a consolidated timeline of aggregated medical history. In its initial phase, it will include DHA facilities as well as several many clinic hospitals and clinics and will comprise more than 1.1 million patient files. By the first quarter of 2021, Zuleika Hospital, King's College Dubai and Al Zahra Hospital will also come on board. The scheme's implementation is part of a three-year project that will ensure every patient in Dubai will have an electronic file. Staying with health and the month of Movember may be coming to a close, but it's more important than ever to talk about men's health. Globally, 1.3 million men are diagnosed with prostate cancer each year. Like most cancers, doctors say that early detection is key. Katie Jensen sat down with Dr. Reinhold Zimmerman, a consultant of urology at the American Hospital Dubai, to find out how the Movember movement is saving lives. We need this month because the men are usually not very aware of their health. Actually, they don't really take care of themselves for many reasons, you know. First, we are strong, you know, we don't have to care about our health because everything works well. Second, uh, actually, and this is what I have learned from my patients, uh, we are usually very, we tend to be very scared if it comes to going to a doctor and, you know, this is a sensitive part as well. So men's health uh, implicates you're taking care of yourself and you're scared. And of course it, it comes to a sensitive area, it, it comes to prostate, it comes to you know all the genitalia which is sensitive and people don't like to talk about it. And they also don't really want to think about it, that's why it's, it's very important to actually raise the awareness uh, of men's health. And then of course it has to do with many things, it has to do with uh, prostate of course this is the most frequent reason why the people actually come to a, a urologist's office. But it can be many different diseases actually. Uh, most of the time, even if a young man comes to a urologist and he has some, some unspecific complaints and you can, you know, you can read up so many things in the media, then he will think, oh my God, I have read this and that and Google tells me I have prostate cancer and the guy might be 25 years old, right? And then you have to first, you have to bring him down and tell him, see, maybe it's related to the prostate what you're having, maybe it's not at all. First, uh, come down and let's find out more about your condition. So what are some of the risky symptoms to look out for? When should a man be going to see a urologist? First of all, this is uh, everything which has to do with uh, difficulties uh, to urinate, pain while urinating, burning sensation while urinating. Of course, blood in the urine is always an alert. Uh, and uh, this is a very important message what I want to bring across as well. Prostate cancer in an early stage does not have any symptoms. So please don't think about the worst case scenario first. So, but these are the most important symptoms what you have to take seriously and what, what should bring you to the urologist. Difficulties to urinate, burning sensation, etc. And, and blood in the urine mainly. So what would be your final piece of advice to people watching today? What's your key takeaway for them? Uh, take yourself seriously, take your health seriously, that's very important because men tend not to do that. Uh, go and seek professional advice whenever you feel something is wrong. Take the regular uh, checkup series as well. As for the guidelines, again, if someone has a, a family history of prostate cancer, go and see a urologist at the age of 45 onwards, once a year is enough, otherwise start screening at the age of 50. And then it's very easy, what, what, what you have to do in the office of a urologist is just a quick examination, don't worry. And if the PSA is elevated, then we have perfect tools actually to find out what is the reason. And in most of the cases, it's not a prostate cancer. And if it really is, then we have nowadays uh, really good ways to treat it. And uh, please have in mind as well, 80% of the people who have a prostate cancer, who are unfortunate enough, to have the diagnosis of prostate cancer are diagnosed in an organ confined. That means in a very early stage. That means it's treatable, it's curable. Not only treatable, but also curable. And it will not affect your life expectancy and it will probably also not affect your quality of life. And that's a very important take home message. 
Okay, it's time for a short break, but stay with us here on Emirates News. Greg Fairley is here with the business next and an Israeli presence at Jitex this year, Greg. That is right, Ramya. UAE to host Israeli business, tech and investor delegation at the 40th Jitex Technology Week in-person event, which begins this Sunday. That story and more on the way when we continue in a moment. Welcome back to Emirates News. Our top story tonight, the president today ordered the establishment of a fallen frontline heroes order for those who have lost their lives while tackling COVID-19. And it's time now for the business. Abu Dhabi's non-oil exports and re-exports amounted to an impressive 32.8 billion dirhams between June and August of this year. That's up 62.5% compared to 20.2 billion dirhams recorded between March and May this year. The Abu Dhabi Department of Economic Development figures show that the results highlight the growth in Abu Dhabi's non-oil exports and re-exports despite the global repercussions from the global pandemic. The UAE will see the first Israeli technology delegation to the country at the upcoming 40th edition of JITEX Technology Week, hosted at Dubai World Trade Center. The in-person global technology event will take place between the 6th and the 10th of December. The Israel Export Institute, in partnership with Bank Hapoelim, will lead the delegation of Israeli government officials, entrepreneurs and business executives. The first ever Healthcare Future Summit will be hosted virtually here in Dubai from December 6 until the 8th, featuring the world's leading specialists and providers. The event is being organized by Index Conferences and Exhibitions, a member of Index Holding. Under the theme Bringing Healthcare Communities Together, the summit will address the COVID-19 pandemic with a focus on patient care and treatment. Europe's second biggest insurer has agreed to sell its insurance operations in the Gulf region to Kuwait's Gulf Insurance Group for a reported figure of 269 million US dollars. The company said in a statement it expects to close the deal by the third quarter of next year. The transaction is subject to customary closing conditions, including the receipt of regulatory approvals. Etihad Airways is relaunching flights from Beijing to Abu Dhabi with a weekly flight scheduled from December 7th. It's the second route added between China and Abu Dhabi since the global pandemic halted flights earlier this year. Etihad resumed its flights to Shanghai in late July and is now the only carrier in the MENA region to operate non-stop passenger flights from both Shanghai and Beijing. The Abu Dhabi-based carrier says that they are ready to fly more frequently to China when possible. Abu Dhabi will host its first winter shopping season next month as it looks to attract local and international visitors to boost the economy post-COVID. Abu Dhabi shopping season will run from December 10th until February the 14th with thousands of stores set to take part in a series of promotions and festive events. Officials at DCT Abu Dhabi say that they are ready to welcome tourists from their largest international source markets this winter. Strict safety measures will be in place alongside the Emirates Go Safe stamp of approval for malls, hotels, restaurants and public venues with social distancing, regular sanitization and face masks enforced at all times. And that is your business tonight. Join me tomorrow when we'll be looking at the findings of a CIO study. Now back to Ramya. Thank you, Greg. Here are some potentially alarming statistics. Over 54 million cyber attacks were recorded in the GCC during the first half of 2020. A new study conducted by Trend Micro shows that COVID-19 related threats have been the single largest hazard faced by organizations this year. The cybersecurity company recorded over 41.2 million email threats, 13.1 million URL victims, and more than 61,000 URL hosted attacks. Trend Micro blocked 8.8 .8 million COVID-19 related threats, of which more than 90% were spam delivered via emails. 
However, officials say since the lockdown, more than 80% of the UAE's remote workers have become more conscious of their organization's cybersecurity policies and methods to protect themselves from an online breach. Okay, you're watching Emirates News. Time for another break. But when we come back, it's the sport with Graham Clue. So another day, another national team head coach is gone. It's been weeks since we searched for a head coach, so why not start the whole process <laughs> again? I know. So, yes, the search is on yet again. The UAE Football Association are now looking at appointing their sixth national team head coach in three years. Welcome back to Emirates News. Our top story tonight, the president today ordered the establishment of a fallen frontline heroes order for those who have lost their lives while tackling COVID-19. And it's time now for the sport. The UAE Football Association and head coach of the national team, George Luis Pinto, have parted ways by mutual consent. The Colombian was hired at the end of June and, just like the man he replaced, Serbian Ivan Jovanovic, he has now left the role without taking charge of a single competitive fixture. In his 154 days in the job, he presided over several hastily organised friendlies where his record was 1-1 and lost 2. The well-oiled machine of looking for a replacement is already underway with an announcement expected within a few days as the nation searches for its sixth national team head coach in three years. The new sporting bond between the UAE and Israel continues to grow as the Dubai Sports Council welcomed a guest to their headquarters. Hapoel Tel Aviv is one of Israel's oldest football clubs and co-owner and board member Boaz Toshav was welcomed by Saeed Hareb, Secretary General of the Dubai Sports Council. The topics under discussion included investment from both sides and mutual cooperation over players, facilities and planning for the long term. Now onto the pitch, and despite only playing over the weekend, all the teams in the Arabian Gulf League are playing again tonight and tomorrow. Fajera are coming off a 3-0 loss to Al Wasl, while opponents Al Jazeera beat Hatter at the weekend and are up to third in the table. Al Wasl will be confident of getting more points away at second from bottom Hatter. Those games have already kicked off. And later at nine, bottom side Hatter are playing third from bottom Korfa Khan. And finally, league leaders Sharjah are at home against Shabab Al Ahly. Tomorrow begins with the all Abu Dhabi clash of Al Wada versus Al Dafra. Al Nasser are in second place and they are away at Kalba. And lastly, Al Ain are on the road and travel to the capital to face Banias. And golf and the best of the European Tour are arriving in Dubai for the two-week climax to this season's Race to Dubai, following the end of the Alfred Dunhill Championship in South Africa. This was the last event of the season not to take place in the UAE, and it was a native South African who won the title. Christian Bezadenhout fired four rounds in the 60s to reach 14 under par overall and claimed the trophy by four shots. It's his second European Tour win after he claimed the Andalusia Masters title in Spain last year. No, it's incredible. I mean, this, this tournament just has been close to my heart since I've played it for the first time. Um, yeah, and it's always been a tournament that I wanted to win and yeah, just pulled it off. Today is special, really, really special for me. OK, that's it. That's your sport for tonight. Back to Ramya. Thanks, Graham. And finally tonight, to help tackle the challenge of access to potable water in Madagascar, the UAE initiative 20 by 2020 has installed safe water cube fountains across the East African country. The aim is to improve the quality of life for about 8,500 people on a daily basis. The fountains are developed by the 2019 Zaid Sustainability Prize finalist, the Agir Ensemble Association. 
The nonprofit's five step mobile ultra filtration technology makes surface water drinkable. This includes river, pond, well, or brackish water. It removes viruses and bacteria with no energy or maintenance required and no chemicals used. In Madagascar, more than 58% of people lack access to safe drinking water. Okay, and on that, we end tonight's program. Follow us at Emirates underscore news on Instagram and on Twitter. And do continue to join us for our COVID-19 briefs throughout the day, as well as for our regular 7.30 p.m. bulletins. Thanks for watching and good night.